As raw feeding starts to become more accepted by regular pet owners, many myths are starting to emerge around how you should and shouldn't feed it. New raw feeders are often pushed towards strict ratio guidelines and feeding rules nowadays, but are they correct? In this video, I'm going to go over three myths about the raw diet that may actually surprise you. Myth number one, the 80-10-5-5 ratio is the exact ratio of a prey animal. This ratio is what most pet owners begin with when going into feeding a homemade raw diet. This is something even I suggest new raw feeders start with because it's a good base and easy to follow. You basically feed your pet a certain percentage of their body weight, usually ranging from 2 to 3 percent, where 80 percent of this is muscle meat, 10 percent is raw meaty bone, 5 percent is liver, and 5 percent is another secreting organ. The idea is to recreate the ratios of a prey animal's body. This is just an approximation that used to be called Franken prey that raw feeders use as a starting base. However, the guideline ratios evolved into a strict rule where if you deviate from 10% bone or 5% secreting organ, the diet is suddenly unbalanced. This is how I even thought in the beginning. I felt like I had to meet each percentage with precision, like down to the milligram, or else I would feel nervous about it being wrong. In reality though, prey animals are often 50% muscle meat, 12 to 15% bone, with skin accounting for 13 to 16%, leaving the organ meats to be around 25%. Since all of these parts aren't often possible to find and purchase, this is why the ratios have been altered. In general, dogs do well eating 10 to 15% bone, while cats do well eating 6 to 8%. When it comes to the organ meat percentage, these can be altered as well. With the liver percentage in the meal, we need to realize that not every liver has the same nutrient profile. Poultry and rabbit liver shouldn't exceed 5%, but ruminant liver from beef, venison, and goat shouldn't exceed 2-3% because their copper content is much higher. When it comes to the second secreting organ, this can be fed a bit higher than 5% especially if you have a handful of different secreting organs like spleen, kidney, and brain that all provide a different array of nutrients. Myth number two, all whole prey is balanced. I've mentioned that whole prey is balanced in many of my videos, and while it is the closest to being naturally balanced, we can't assume every single animal at every single age is perfectly balanced. For example, chicks, rabbit kits, and fuzzy mice are all going to be higher in fat and lower in calcium than an adult chicken, rabbit, and mouse. This is because they're not fully developed yet. This isn't to say that adolescent prey animals aren't great to feed at times, they just shouldn't be the sole source. My ferret Choji loves young prey because they're more his size, but they're more like a treat than anything else. Additionally, adults of different species will have a different nutrient profile. For example, when comparing an adult mouse to an adult chicken, chickens are higher in magnesium, zinc, and manganese, while mice are higher in iron, copper, and a bit higher in calcium as well. This is why feeding a variety of whole prey animals is always encouraged, because if you're just feeding one, they may be a lot lower in certain essential nutrients than what your pet needs. Myth number three, adding supplements to the meal is bad. If you're seasoned in raw feeding, you know that many raw feeders advocate against adding synthetic nutrients to the meals unless it's 100% necessary. Even I have mentioned this before because if we can, we like to provide these nutrients through natural, bioavailable food sources. Because of this, newer raw feeders may think that these are simply bad and should just be avoided. But this isn't true. While food-derived sources will always be preferred, synthetic supplements are just fine to add in if a nutrient needs to be met. I personally rotate food sources and supplements, especially when I'm relying on a plant source like wheatgrass powder to provide vitamin E. Since we don't fully understand the bioavailability of wheatgrass powder in our pet's bodies, I like to rotate with pure vitamin E oil as well. Something that you should be aware of when it comes to supplements though is that many come in different forms. For example, zinc comes in many forms. In this instance, current research has suggested that zinc picolinate is better absorbed by the body than other forms. Want to learn more about adding supplements to your pet's raw meals? Watch this video.